I think it is now time for the main event. And to make sure we know everything we need to know about the main event, would you welcome up uh, with me our great Kidsman director, Mrs. Erica Schrader. Come on up here. Well, hello, Compass Bible Church Tustin family and friends and neighbors and teachers and coaches and however it is that you know these kids. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. I am so excited for you guys to be able to watch this show right now because these kids did a phenomenal job at the 9 o'clock service and I know that they're going to bring it just as hard for you guys. So they're warmed up because they already performed once today. So now it's time for you guys to get warmed up. We love audience participation here. So if there's something very sweet and tender that happens on stage, what would your response to that be? Aww, yeah, very good. And if you see a kid that you know and love, how are you going to respond to them coming out on stage? If they have a solo or if they say something funny, how might you respond? Okay, I'm not going to lie, the 9 a.m. had you guys beat. I'm not going to lie. So get warmed up because these kids are ready. And like I said, we just love audience participation. Thank you again for being here. I am so excited to present to you guys the kids' Christmas musical, Sheep in Heavenly Peace, directed by Miss Shannon Tweed and performed by our very own Compass Kids.
tell you again, good people of Bethlehem, I know many of you have traversed the far. You're weary, your animals are weary, I am weary. But for the final time, there is no room in the stable. My helpful helper, Riley, will give you the updated report. Riley? You bet, boss. Breaking news from our zoo. Dateline, the Wool Street Journal. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I crack myself up. <clears throat> we just received four barking dogs, three fat hogs, two cooing doves, and a donkey with a very short temper. That's it, we quit. But Nick, you and your son are my last two shepherds, and you have the hill to do tonight. You can't quit. Watch us, you won't have Nick or Nick's son to kick around anymore. Now what am I supposed to do? The only way the Bethlehem stable will survive is if we hire more assistants. And that is precisely my plan. Greetings, everyone. Vivian Swan, permanent CEO of the Temporary Swan Employment Agency. Our motto is we put the I back into hire. The I? Yes, I do the hiring. You do the work. I was called to Bethlehem to handle an emergency. We sure have one. With all the visitors coming from the census, this town is overcrowded and understaffed. And that is exactly what I've been doing today, filling temporary jobs. Bellhops at the inn, waitresses at the falafel house, used dromedary salesmen at the Camelot, and now there is only one job left. <clears throat> Allow me to read the notice. Wanted. One certain poor shepherd. Make that three shepherds. We just had two unexpected vacancies open up. All right, three shepherds to keep watch over some sheep by night. Location, the hills above Bethlehem. Hazard pay included. Hazard pay? Conditions can be rough. That's probably why no one has applied. Indeed, I had to dispatch my administrative assistant, Mackenzie, to the hills. She's watching the sheep until the temps arrive. How are things up there? Deteriorating quickly, her last message only had two words. Farewell. Oh. <laughs> we better find some shepherds fast. I can't take this anymore. All the mooing, the grunting, the squawking. Yes, those poor animals. Animals, I'm talking about me. <laughs> well, if I can't fill the jobs in Bethlehem, I'll just have to visit the next town over. Last call, three temp shepherds, going once, going twice. Sold! I mean, we'll take the jobs. All of them. Oh, good. Oh, no. And who are you? I'm Haywood. This is my brother, Wolfgang. Howdy. Speak up. Howdy. Wolfgang's a bit shy. This is my sister, Gabby. She's not shy. Well, bye, ma, bye, and call me a biscuit. I am so tickled to meet y'all. If I was any happier, I'd be, I'd be so wins. <laughs> we just journeyed from the big city to the country. We're your new shepherds. I'm sorry, Mr. Walton, but the positions are no longer available. What? When did this happen? When they showed up. Listen, Maxine, I've known this family for a long time. You could even say they're my oldest repeat clients. I keep getting them jobs, and they keep getting fired. It isn't our fault. We just haven't found the right match for our talents. And what exactly are your talents? Here's, we're completely unique, just like everyone else. Here's my resume. Me and Wolfgang are real good with animals, and Gabby just wanted to make the world a more attractive place. It's true. I can make a hog's pen prettier than a glop of buttermilk on a stack of flapjacks. I was blessed with the decorating gene. We know the perfect job is out there, just waiting for us. We're tired of being here today, gone tomorrow, of always being on the move. We're ready for something that lasts forever, and that something may be right here in Bethlehem tonight. <laughs>
little time at a pet boutique outside of Jared. Yeah, we had a good thing going. Shampoo and food, my Essex Express. It's still walking on the all mixed up. Well, shampoo bottle said to help me look rich, silky, and dazzling. And? And the treats would clean my teeth. And? And everything would have been fine if you would have stopped there. I guess they gave me new leash on life. <laughs> uh. resume, my friends, but puppy shampoos and seal tricks don't exactly prepare you to shepherd a flock of sheep. How hard can it be? They paw, they bleat, they eat, they sleep, then they wake up and do it all over again. So, do, so what do we do? You make sure they stick together and all do it at the same time. And keep their coats fluffed and curled. Maybe you can take them to the barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What you described, Mr. Woolton, is not listed on the job description. Sure it is. We all have copies of the ad. It says, wanted, certain poor shepherds. Well, we're most definitely poor. And we're certain we need jobs. No, no. The duties, the, the duties of the shepherd we are looking for are very specific. You better read the rest of the want ad. We need to be sure you have the necessary qualifications. This ad was written by the shepherd you were replacing. His name is Enoch. He's the oldest and wisest shepherd in the hills. Why isn't he there now? He had a mishap with one of the ramps and broke his leg. He's laid out for the rest of the week. But he made me promise to only hire someone with the shepherd's heart. He listed four requirements. Let's see what it says. Item one, a shepherd always guides his sheep to higher ground and greener grass. Item two, a shepherd always protects his sheep from stormy nights and those who wish them harm. Item three, a shepherd always loves his God. For as, it, for as it is written, God tends to his flock like a shepherd and carries the lamb close to his heart. Thus says Isaiah. So who's this Isaiah guy? Is he on a shepherd licensing board somewhere? No, Isaiah was a prophet. That means he talked about something that was going to happen in the future. There are still prophets who talk to us today, but their words were written down. Some of the prophets, one of the prophets even talks about this town. 
You mean Bethlehem? What does it say? Just read the fourth job requirement and you'll find out. Okay. Item four. You will become a Bethlehem shepherd, and a Bethlehem shepherd is always praying and watching for the coming Messiah, which means God shows him one. For the prophet Micah said, For you, Bethlehem, out of you will come a ruler over Israel. He will shepherd his flock, and he will be their peace. Wow. Keep reading. Enoch wrote down everything the prophet said about the Messiah. He read them so often, he said they were written on his heart. Messiah, there's a lot to the shepherding thing, isn't there? I don't think I'm ready to do this job. Enoch felt the same way when he started out, but he liked to remember that King David was also a young shepherd. He once said that the Lord was his shepherd. Thanks, Maxine. That helps a lot. So, Mr. Woolton, do you and your underachieving family think you're qualified for this job? Of course. Hey, Wood, I'm not sure we're ready for this. Maybe there's another manual we can read, like shepherding for dummies. We know everything we need to know. Miss Maxine, you got yourself three new shepherds. Good. You're hired. Riley will get your supplies and equipment. You bet, boss. Staffs and rations. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I packed my own equipment. A Tizico in my 100% cash mo wrap. A true lady is prepared for all life's little emergencies. Here's a map, Haywood. We don't want you getting lost. So you know the road that winds up at the hill and disappears over the ridge? Of course. Well, don't follow that road. You'll end up in the Dead Sea. Turn right in the second olive tree and left at the third boulder. You can't miss it. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. This could be the best job you've ever had. I certainly hope so. Well, look, night's falling, so you best travel quickly. Oh, watch out for robbers. Don't get fleeced. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, you're all just months for punishment. Riley! Riley! Godspeed Sorry. your journey. Shalom. Are you, are you sure you know the way, Haywood? Are you sure we'll know what to do when we get there? Sure, I'm sure. Come on, this may be the best. 
best job we ever had! Above our deep end, she will sleep we have the style of stars to keep us company. Still may be the best job we've ever had. See the top of the hill. What is worse than sheep without a shepherd? And if we lose one, and it's gone forever, still may be the best job we've ever had. We heard that some may give their life for sheep. That's absurd. Aren't they just wildlife? Still may be the best job we've ever had. do is find the sheep. <laughs> Listen. Uh, what was that? No. It's coming from underneath that blanket. Then we have to uncover it. Come on, Wolfgang. One, two, three. Ah! Ah! Look, it's a girl. No, it's an administrative assistant. It must be Mackenzie. Vivian said she'd be watching the sheep until we arrived. Looks like we got here just in time. She does seem a bit anxious. Go grab some water from your pack, Wolfgang. We'll bring her around. No need for that. What's needed here is a little woman heart to heart. Mackenzie, you snap out of it, girlfriend! You're acting crazy in this very show mug! Oh, you've come! At last you've come! I'm rescued! I can return to civilization and people and take out and no sheep! I need to back up! Will you help me, um, shepherd person? My name's Gabby and I think I know where I can help. Gracious girl, it looks like your hair caught fire and somebody put it out the brick. Now you leave everything to me in my teeth and comb. Oh, thank you. Ouch. Eek. Ooh. I'll help you pack, Mr. Kenzie. How long have you been here? An eternity. I'm not cut out for this life of extreme survival. I mean, I have an MBA. Mackenzie, 
Where are the sheep? Hard to say. I think I misplaced them sometime yesterday. Oh no, Gabby, we need to go round them up right away. Well, my beautiful one job is done. Looky here in this mirror, Miss McKenzie. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, Tavita bows are my signature trademark. <laughs> Goodbye, we'll be back as soon as we can. <laughs> Goodbye, wherever you are. That's my older brother, Haywood. He tends to take charge of things. He must have been shepherding a long time. Oh no, this is his first job as a shepherd. It's the first time for all of us. Really? You all seem to know a lot about being shepherds. Not really, but we're learning. A really wise shepherd named Enoch wrote down a lot of things that we need to remember. Like what? Like how Bethlehem shepherds need to always pray and watch for the coming Messiah. Messiah means God's chosen one. Does Enoch say when this Messiah will come? No, it's probably going to be a big surprise, but we need to keep watching. That's why I'm glad we're on top of this hill. We got a great view from up here. You know, Wolfgang, I think you're going to make a great shepherd one day. Well, thanks for helping me pack, and tell Gabby thanks for the hair 911. Oh, and I really hope Haywood finds the sheep. Bye, Mackenzie. Goodbye. Turn right at the second old tree and left at the third boulder. Wolfgang, we have a process in the making! What do you mean? I can see you found the sheep. But when he counted them, one was missing. It must have wandered off and gotten lost. This is Piper, Dakota, and Charles. They're shepherds in the next hill. They've been helping us though. Can't find it. Nope, it's gone. We're gonna be fired again! It's not about being fired, it's about finding the sheep. That's what's important. I think I see it. There's a baby lamb over there by itself. It may be hurt. Don't worry. I'll go get it. Did you hear that? Did you see that? It's coming from the sky. It's all around us. Oh, Wolfgang, I'm frightened. Don't be scared, Gabby. I feel something wonderful is about to happen. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy today. In the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Well, by the sheep we watched at night, a silent night. Glad tidings brought an angel bright, bright shining out of nowhere. The skies were glowing, exploding, the voices of angels crowing. Today in the city of David, a Savior is born. How great our joy, peace has come for us in Christ our Lord. How great our joy, 
back to Bethlehem. Oh, Haywood, you found the lamb. Did you hear the angels? Every word. We have to hurry. I'm right behind you. Get on shortcut to Bethlehem. Follow us. We'll meet we'll you at the manger. Welcome back, my friends. This table looks different than before. There is much different. Come inside and see. Look, it's a baby, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Exactly as the angel said. Oh, glory to God. Yes, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace on those on whom his favor rests. We're so glad you could come. How did you guys find us? We received some very specific directions and knew exactly who we were looking for. And who is that? The angel said that today a savior has been born in the city of David. Ah, yes, the city of David. For as the prophet Micah said, out of you, O Bethlehem, shall arise a ruler over Israel. He will shepherd his flock and he will be their peace. I'm pleased to meet you. Wolfgang, I've heard so much about you and your family. This is Enoch, the shepherd you were replacing. Of course, I should have recognized you. Well, yes, it's quite easy with my knee in a cast. This is Gabby and Haywood, my sister and brother. Thank you all for shepherding my flock. I feel they were in good hands. We learned a lot about sheep, and especially about being shepherds, Bethlehem shepherds. And what did you learn? We learned to watch and pray and that a shepherd always loves his god for as it is written god tends to his flock like a shepherd and carries the lamb close to his heart everyone i would like you to meet the baby's mother her name is mary and her intended joseph they traveled here to bethlehem for the census our town was so crowded but when it was time for the baby to be born, suddenly there was more than enough room, and the animals were so quiet and content. A little peace at last. That's what this baby has brought all of us. Mary, Joseph, it's such an honor to meet you. And what's the baby's name? His name is Jesus. This is the name the angel told us to give the child. It means he will save their, his people from their sins. I would like to give Jesus this lamb, for he is the shepherd I will serve from now on. Oh, and here's my wrap. The baby might need it to stay warm. Haywood, I hope you'll keep your shepherd's staff and return to the hills with Dakota, Charles, Piper, and myself. For you, my son, truly have a shepherd's heart. And Gabby and Wolfgang, I would like you to stay here at the stable. Now you all have a home. Thank you, Enoch. We finally found something that will last forever. Yes, and it will last forever and ever. And so, as it is written by Isaiah, the prophet of God, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
It would be many years later that I would come to understand who the baby in the manger really was. I watched as Jesus grew to be a man, the good shepherd calling people to the safety of his fold. And Haywood eventually took over my flock and became a follower of Jesus Christ. I journeyed to Jerusalem to where Jesus was put to death on a cross, then rose again from the tomb. He was a good shepherd, but he was also the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And because he took away our sins as he died, lost sheep like you and me can now have peace with God. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sins and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come with us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel.
Wow, that was an incredible performance, wasn't it? Give him one more round of applause. Great job, guys. What an awesome job those kids did, but they couldn't have done that without a number of different people who were involved in this production. We'd like to take a, just a special moment to recognize some of those people. So if we could have you, when I, when I call your name, you can come up to the front here. We've got a little gift we'd like to give for you. If we could have uh, Erica Schrader come on up. Erica Schrader, <laughs> producer extraordinaire, Kidsman director. We thank her so much for all the work that she's done. Uh, Tracy Vosper, lead choreographer. She, she just beat me out for that job. I was almost lead choreographer for that. I was almost. Uh, Deara Johnson, who couldn't make it today, but we still give her a round of applause for all the work that she did. Um, can we have Elise Mason come on up here, who did so much administrative work, set design. She's coming there. She is over there. And then the rest of the choreography team, Monica Fung and Jenna Randolph, come on up. Great job, girls. Thank you so much for all the work you did. Uh, and if we, could have, if we could have a special round of applause for Shannon Tweed, the director of the program. Shannon, come on up. There she is. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, one more round of applause for these ladies. Thank you guys so much. You can bow or you can sit down, whatever you want to do. One of the two. Dealer's choice there at that point in time. Uh, and uh, one, more, one more team to thank, the tech team in the back. Can we give them a round of applause? Now that is a hard job to do what they did, and we don't have any flowers for them, but still you could say thank you to the tech team uh, at the end for all that they did, to mic the different things and to make sure that everything goes on, the, the hours that they put into all that, so we thank the tech team. In fact, the tech team is very important to me, uh, because every time that you have something like this, you always need to make sure that people can hear the message that's going on or else we're going to miss out what's going on. You can notice things about Christmas and you can see pictures of it, but if you miss the message, uh, that can be a terrible, terrible thing. So that's why we're very thankful for the tech team. They always make sure the message is proclaimed. But you walk around the city of Tustin, you're, you're more than uh, probably going to notice a number of different things that would just cue you that it's Christmas. You can see certain things. You can see nativity scenes or Christmas trees, long lines at the stores, all these different things. Uh, but if you just see and you don't hear the message, that would be a very, very terrible thing because we believe Christmas is so important. The fundamental nature of what we're saying God did in the Christmas story is an incredible, credible thing. If you see it and you don't hear the message, that's bad. That actually happened recently to a group of fans uh, when they attended the premiere of The Last Jedi. Anybody heard of The Last Jedi? The movie just came out uh, recently. We got a couple, a couple fans out there. Maybe they were even at this uh, performance. It was at a theater in Burbank. And they go in and they're there and it's the big performance of the night and they look up and it starts out like any Star Wars movie does. You see the Lucasfilm logo and it's silent. And then you see the line that says long ago in a galaxy far, far away and it's silent as normal. And then they expect the big epic burst of the trumpets coming through as they see everything scroll up through the screen. But it didn't happen. The, the words scroll, but there was no sound. Then one minute passed and there was no sound. And two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes in, they're seeing images but they're not hearing anything, and rightfully, they were disgruntled because they want to hear, not just see. They need to have the combination of the two. It actually even turned into like almost of a riot-type situation where they actually called the Burbank police in to kind of check the situation. Good thing is most of those adults still lived with their parents, so they just called. <laughs> they just called the parents, and they said, come get your adult children who should be more well-behaved than this, and that's kind of how they dealt with that. But they, they would have missed the message if they just saw and they didn't hear the message. And that's what we want to make sure you walk away with. You don't just see the cute things that are going on here. You understand the message that is together there. And what we're saying is that God came down and as a human being lived a perfect life, went to the cross, died the death that you deserve to die for sinning against the holy God, rose again three days later, and anyone who puts their faith and trust in Jesus Christ receives that eternal life. That's just an amazing thing to celebrate. And what I think you heard at the end of that play is that it's more than just understanding that, it's following Jesus. 
A lot of people don't really understand what that is. We've actually been talking a lot about that as a church, what it means to believe, not just understand, but to, to follow Jesus, to put your faith and trust is to put everything into him. People don't understand what it means to follow Christ. What does it mean to follow someone who sacrificed for you? Let me tell you another story I read about recently. It was overseas, and there's this very important meeting going on with a lot, a lot of uh, high-quality people in the, in the government there, and there was a, a police officer hired to kind of be security for the event. And they heard that there was possibly a terrorist threat, so they were on alert because there's a number of high-profile people there. Uh, so the, the police officer's there, and he's guarding, and they heard that there was a, a suspected suicide bomber there. And out of the corner of his eye, he sees someone who looks like the description of what they were warned. And as he sees him, he tells him to stop, and he's going to come, and he's going to check him out. And as soon as he says that, the guy starts running at the, the venue with all the important people of the city, and it's the police officer's job to stop this guy. So do you know what he did? He ran up and bear-hugged the suicide bomber, and the bomb detonated and took the guy's life, who was hired to protect all the people there. He absorbed what was trying to destroy the people behind him. Now, when you think about that, you start to understand the gravity of what we're saying here. Jesus came to, to die, to take that punishment that we deserved. And when he took that punishment, we look at that act of love very differently. So to say we follow Jesus Christ is an incredible blessing and benefit for us. Now imagine that, that scene with that, that police officer. Imagine he wrote in a will. He, he knew he was going to give his life one day. He wrote in a will and said, anybody who I die for, I'd like them to do these things. I'd like to devote their life to charity, take care of their family, do a number of different good things. Do you think those people who receive that, that testament and that will of all the things that, that that guy who sacrificed for them is asking them to do, do you think they look at that as a burden or do you think they realize because of the sacrifice that they received that that's really a privilege for them to live that out. Someone died for them, and they have the opportunity now to live it out. See, 1 Peter 2, 24 and 25 says this, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we should die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For all we like sheep have gone astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. So when you become a Christian, what you're doing is you're recognizing the one who sacrificed everything for you, who protected you from the thing that was going to destroy you. And when he calls you to follow him, you answer that call. And that's what we want you to know today. If you don't know Jesus Christ, by putting your faith and trust and following him, the one who, who died in your place, who, who took the punishment that you deserve, well, you're now called to follow him as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we want you to know that today. That's the reason we're here to celebrate. That's the reason we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And we want you to know that you can have that here today. So why don't we go ahead and, and pray, and then afterwards we'll be able to have a great time of fellowship. You can thank the cast and crew outside again. Please join us with a, a great time of fellowship on the patio. We're so thankful that you've come. Let's go to God and pray, and then we'll be dismissed. God, you're so good to us to send your son your son whom you loved, who loved us so much that he would bear that punishment, that he would take that pain, that he would take the, the, the hurt and the pain and the death that we deserve to die, God, because of our sin, and now opens up an avenue for eternal life for us, for those who follow him. God, I pray that that would be imprinted on the hearts and minds of everyone here to realize the dignity and love and honor and sacrifice of one who gave himself, who didn't have to die. He lived the perfect life. And yet he died because he loved us. God, rising again three days later proves everything that he said was true. And that resurrection is where we get our resurrection power as well. So I pray that we'd walk out of here changed people because we know Jesus Christ. So God, may that message never get clouded out in the season. But may we be dedicated to living that out each and every single day. And Father, we ask that all of this would be done for the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.